Hi, this is uh, Jason with RPC Electronics, and if you're wondering where Lesson 12 is, Lesson 12 is being worked on for the Eagle tutorial. I uh, just haven't had time to finish it. Uh, it is coming. I just haven't uh, just been very busy, and it's coming soon. In the meantime, if you've uh, if you've watched all of the Eagle tutorial lessons, you might have remembered uh, me saying something about uh, crucial routing. And that's what this lesson is going to be. This lesson is going to be a um, short lesson in some crucial routing. Uh, when it comes to uh, specific components, um, you can't simply just leave the parts anywhere you want on the board. There, they, there's a methodical um, process to where some of these parts need to go. And uh, what I've got here is a very simple uh, uh, schematic including a uh, battery power supply, uh, a voltage regulator, some filtering caps. More importantly, we have a PIC microprocessor here, IC1. And there's some parts associated with that PIC that are important. One of them is this R1, which is the M clear line. This, this resistor is tied to uh, VCC, or 5 volts in this case. This keeps the PIC from it keeps it from resetting itself. It basically keeps the line high. This is commonly referred to as a pull-up resistor. There's also the C3, which is a filtering capacitor for the uh, power supply for the PIC. Um, you'll see in a few minutes why that's crucial. And then we also have Q1, which is the clock oscillator or oscillating uh, crystal for the PIC. And it's associated decoupling cap uh, capacitors, C1 and C2. And we also have a couple LEDs. These aren't really crucial, but I do want to show how uh, proper placement can really ease uh, uh, running your traces. So I'm going to bring up the board here. I've already placed everything in place. Uh, we're Basically what we're going to do here is we're going to run these traces, but I'm going to show you how running these traces are kind, of, are kind of crucial based on where the part is located. So let's start with the power supply section which is the left side of the board. We have an, um, a battery uh, footprint here which is essentially just two solder pads, through hole pads for in this case a 9 volt battery snap connector, two filtering capacitors and the voltage regulator. If you've watched the previous lessons in the Eagle tutorial um, this is going to look very similar to you. The, the filtering caps, as well as the um, as well as the uh, the uh, voltage regulator. So let's go ahead and get and use our route tool. And in this case, you're going to notice this is all surface mount, almost all surface mount. And uh, the only thing it's not at this point at the is the nine volt battery connector and the crystal. But that's okay. Um, we can easily mix surface mount and through hole parts on any board. Uh, we can always make them uh, play together nicely. But in this case, we are dealing with uh, surface mount uh, capacitors as well as the voltage regulator. So we're going to want to select our top layer for our, for, um, our trace. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And we'll start with the 9-volt connector. Now, I'm going to have a uh, just the uh, standard default uh, thickness on the trace here. But in this case, I want to I want to take the thickness up a little bit uh, because it is a power supply line. So we'll start by running this trace here to the cap, and then we'll go from the cap to the regulator. And you can see that this cap, being that it's part of the input, the filtering input cap, we want it to be pretty much in line with this trace. The external or the output cap, filtering cap is going to also be located very close to the output of the regular which just happens to be right here so we'll go ahead and run that trace there for that cap now the output of this regular is going to feed one side of this pull-up resistor for the m clear line as well as it's going to feed the uh, vcc pin on the on the pick itself so what i like to do here is we know that we've got to get both of these connections to the output of the regulator. So what we'll do is we'll start with, uh, what I like to do is I, I look for the smallest pad that I'm working with. And in this case, it's going to be this pad on the pick. So we'll select it, but we'll see that this trace is way too big. So we want to size this down just a bit. 
and that's real close but I want to go down just one more size there we go so by doing this we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and run this trace and I'm gonna run it the most uh, straightforward way that I can come up with and in this case uh, we come up through the middle of the uh, of the microprocessor footprint from that VCC pin to the to the pull-up resistor and now we're going to go from the resistor down to the regulator and tie into the regulator. So now we've effectively fed 5 volts from the regulator through our pull-up resistor and over to the VCC pin of the pick. Now another semi-crucial route in it at this point would be the connection of the other side of the pull-up resistor to the M clear pin. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that and we'll use that same trace thickness. Uh, we'll also look at this since we're talking about power. Let's look at this filtering cap. This is uh, this is not really a filtering cap. This is more of a decoupling cap. One side of it is going to the power, and the other side is going to ground. So in this case, we want to de we want to decouple this this uh, pin, the the VCC pin with this cap. So we'll go in here and we'll select our trace from the resistor. and we'll run our trace straight to the resistor just like that so now we have tied this decoupling cap this side of the resistor or this side of the capacitor i'm sorry is tied to ground and this uh this will be taken care of when we lay our ground plane later on another crucial component in this circuit would be the clock oscillator or the crystal and in this case we've got the crystal fairly close to the uh, to the pins and this is one thing you want to do anytime that you have a crucial part that needs to have needs to be associated with another part very closely like a crystal we want to get it as close to the processor as possible in this case because we don't want these traces to be extra long where noise can be induced noise into a timing circuit or some kind of clock oscillator can cause um, well, basically erratic operation or erratic care. Um, uh, it, will, it will cause the microprocessors to operate erratically. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So in this case, we've got the crystal fairly close. And we'll do like we did before. We'll just start at the pick pins or pick pads. And we'll run those out to the, to the crystal. And you can see I've simply ran two traces as short and sweet as possible to the, to the crystal. We also have these uh, decoupling caps that are part of the crystal as well. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. We'll, we'll go ahead and run the traces from these caps straight to the crystal. Again, keeping the traces short and sweet. Keeping the parts that are associated with each other close together. And lastly, <clears throat> we've got these two LEDs. And these are not crucial runs, but I also I want to show you how by methodically placing your parts you can make your life a lot easier as far as tr as running these traces so i'm going to start with this pin here and i'm going to tie it to the led and we'll start with this pin as well and we'll run this to this led so you can see that i was able to run two very easy traces by going under the pick under the footprint or between the footprint as, and straight to the LEDs and by placing those LEDs there if this is a possibility with your design this is a good way to do it because you're reducing the uh, complexity of the of the traces um, these are not crucial other than the fact that they are limiting resistor current limiting resistors for the caps R3 as well as R2 and now those are those are tied together as well Essentially, what's left here are all of our ground connections. And the easiest thing to do with that is to go ahead and run a uh, ground plane. So we'll go and we'll do like we did in our lesson. We'll, we'll change to 7 mil. And we'll grab our polygon tool. We reduce our width to the minimum. We want to select this icon here with the little, uh, looks like a little mouse bite. And we want to isolate the 12. And let's go in here and we'll start running our ground plane.
Okay, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and change our ground plane's name to ground GND. And while we're at, let's go ahead and do our bottom ground plane as well. So we'll run the bottom layer. Even though we don't have any traces on the bottom layer, we it still makes sense to have this ground plane tied in. And now we will change the name of the bottom layer to GND ground. And let's hear rat's nest. And there we go. We've now successfully routed all of our parts as well as run a ground plane all the way around. Now one thing you'll notice is we've got this large border here uh, around the ground plane. We want to um, we actually want that to be as close to the edge of the board as possible. So what we'll do is we'll go to our unroute tool and we will click once to select and then click again to unroute the ground plane. We're going to click again but this time it uh, it still is highlighting the blue. We want to right click to change to the red layer. Click again and we've just unrouted our ground plane. But we haven't made it disappear. We've just simply unrouted it. If you go up into the tools in DRC, if you go to the distance tab, there's a copper dimension setting. Right now by default it's set to 40 mil. We're going to set that to 10 mil. Hit apply and close it. Now we're going to rerun our rat's nest. Now you can see that our border all the way around is, is a lot smaller. And that's because we set that distance setting in the DRC menu to 10 mils. So now our border is only 10 mils all the way around. So, okay, I hope that these are some good tips to help you with your crucial routing as, you, as your circuits and your boards get more complex. Um, these are just some simple guidelines that I follow every time that I design anything like this. And I find that uh, these work really well for me. So hopefully it will work well for you too. And uh, appreciate watching and uh, look for lesson 12 coming soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.